Internet radio station in the world. We got no Just feels so good. You're, 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 you're on the number one. Listening to only the best internet radio station in the world. The music just feels so good. You, 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 you're on the number one. Listening to only the best internet radio station in the world. All right, cool. Welcome to TDA Taylor Radio. This is the EMP Drive the special edition. Obviously, we have a special guest in the studio. We're talking about Africa's number one tennis player under 14, 2019. 2020 or 2019? 2019. 2019. Yes, and your biggest dream is to become. World number one. All right, so I got to have you closer. Can I have the microphone closer to you, please? That would be perfect. All right, and you're with your lovely mom. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, how Hello. are you? Yes, you That's love my mother. Tina said so. Okay, so <laughs> Denzel said so, Martina said so, and um, I gotta start with this. Is this your only child? No, I've got four. You've got four. Okay, and they're all into sports. Yes. But okay. This one is the, the first bond that was the experiment. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. The experiment that went number one. Yes. Okay, how long have you been playing tennis? Uh, for eight years now. Eight years now. How old are you? Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay, so you are Africa's number one under 14. And uh, this year you were honored with Botswana. Uh, is it junior sportsman? Last year. Last year. Yeah. Okay, so you were sports um, junior sports person of the year. Mm -hmm. Okay, you've been nominated before. Yes. All right, great. Why tennis? Uh, because I really enjoy the sports. Uh huh. I, I like how I feel on court, and yeah, it's just a great sport. Okay, did you play tennis all your life, or you just no? What What other sports did you choose, or did you play? I did swimming. Swimming. Mainly before tennis. Okay. I did all right okay the other four kids what do they do what other sports do they do um the second bond did, uh, started tennis with denzel uh-huh and then as denzel started better he decided you know that uh, i'm not gonna do tennis whatever happens uh -huh. so he went into swimming um then martin the third born uh -huh. he saw that tensor is now being a star uh -huh. so he thought, <laughs> no i'm also going to be a star and uh -huh. i'm definitely gonna do tennis and beat Denzel and he's always predicting the year he's gonna beat Denzel in and and, and, <laughs> and the last born is a girl and she's into gymnastics all right but she has started playing tennis and shows great promise and she's also a great tennis player I suppose she could be she could she, be if she stays with it okay so he's a what tennis national team would you like to call it that way is that it yeah Okay, and then the second born is a uh, national swimmer. Mm -hmm. All right, and the third one is on his way to becoming national tennis. National tennis, and then maybe gymnastics national team. No, I think it is more likely to be tennis. Oh, uh, is it? But she... now she lives next to the court. Okay, so you've just... built a tennis courts or like an academy around, around your place. Yes, around uh, Denzel's intentions yeah. and needs to to have a competitive environment in tennis without having to leave home okay. at an early age. Let me ask you this, Denzel. Mm -hmm. Your biggest dream is to become world's number one. Yes. Okay, so this is 2021. When do you want to be world number one? Mm, that's a good question. And... Uh... give myself nine years nine years yes. okay so we're saying 2030 is that it that's yeah. when he's 25 when yes. he's oh that's when you're gonna be 25 i'm scared because yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be twice your age i'm gonna be <laughs> half a century in <laughs> okay um so here's the thing that i want to ask you what does it take to become number one uh -huh. A lot of wins, a lot of losses, uh, and uh, a lot of tournaments. Yeah. Match is an experience, yeah. Okay. So 2020 life changed completely for you. Um, let's start with the mom. You've invested so much in him. And then 2020 happens. He's really at his peak. He's number one in Africa. And people are talking about him. And documentaries are happening and stuff like that. Um how did you cope with COVID when everything shut down, you know, as a mother and, you know? Well, for me, in a, in a funny way, COVID was a blessing because Denzel was injured. All right. And and nobody could really work out when he's going to get better, how he's going to get better. Uh. It went on and on. So if it hadn't been COVID and all his other age mates were playing competitive tennis and yeah. and really you know improving visibly and he was sitting at home yes it was going to be very mentally difficult uh -huh. for him and uh, as it was everybody was kind of in such a limbo 
that he was he did have the chance to focus on recovering from his injury without having to think about other things. Yes. So, you know, I'm not saying COVID obviously. Off and stuff like that. Uh, I would have been, but you know, I was with my dad. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, then he would leave me in Zim and go back by bus alone. And then, yeah, I'd just be there for like a month, a month and a half, just, you know, training and all that. Are you not scared? I mean, you're just like no. over 10. No, I'm, I was fine. He's yeah. Too I mean, missing home. <laughs> yeah. Missing home a bit. <laughs> Do you dream tennis? Like no. <laughs> okay. Cuz I'm trying to understand like what's your psyche? Like what what drives you? Like everything around you is when you're 10 and 11 you're traveling different countries sometimes like long distances. Mm -hmm. Cuz I would imagine I would imagine that maybe from here to the place you were going to in Zimbabwe was like 2 days of travel. Uh, the longest was a day. The longest was a day. Yeah. Okay. And you get there, you're probably exhausted and you're playing tennis yeah. the next day or even uh, no. sometimes the same day? No, because uh, I was just going for training. Really. Okay. So I'll just get there, maybe take a day off just to sleep and rest and then start the next day. Yeah. And yeah, but I've had like situations where I'm like traveling, going somewhere far for a tournament and then I like land the day that the tournament starts. And then you just have to play? Yes. And you win. Well, I think I lost. Because <laughs> <laughs> you'd be exhausted mentally. Yeah. Really, it's mm. it's a tough one. Yeah. Okay. Um, how far have you gone by yourself? How far have you traveled by yourself? Alone. Yeah. Uh, well, I've gone to Tunisia alone. I've gone to uh, America alone. I've gone to Kenya alone. How do you deal with the interconnecting, like, you know, when you're in transit and stuff like that? Well, I never take any chances. <laughs> as soon as I get off one flight, I just rush to the next one. Yeah. Read the signs, read your tickets, yeah. Wow. And as a parent, what are the challenges? I mean, having a, a young, ambitious, talented tennis player for Botswana and Africa, of course, what are the challenges as a parent? I think the challenges are not... If I could have you close to yeah, the mic, sorry. I yeah. think the challenges are not letting him down. Okay. You know, because you can see somebody who is working very hard uh, to achieve something. Yes. And normally it's the other way around, you know, like you are supposed to be the example and uh, to your children and you only expect them to do something one day. Yes. But here you actually have it reversed, you know. Your child is already doing something and it's important. Yeah. And you can't compromise on everything that goes with it and everything that's around it. And I think that puts a lot of pressure on you as a parent to live up to what is needed. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, Denzel, mm -hmm. you have gone back now. You've, got, you've come back to tennis now, yes. like with the world opening up a little bit now. Mm -hmm. uh, which tournament have you played so far this year? So far, I've only played three tournaments. Okay. Um, I played two in Bulawayo, and then I played at uh, Davis Cup in Congo. In Congo. Yeah. Okay, how well did you guys do in Congo? Uh, we reached the semifinals. Semifinals. Yes. Do people talk about this? Do people know about this? Do you, do you think the country knows about this? Uh, I think so. I yeah. mean, I was in the newspaper and stuff, and they came to interview us at the court, so I assume. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What does tennis mean to you? A lot. Tennis is what I've dedicated my life to. Oh, it's right. what I do every day. It's what I think about when I'm not playing. So, yeah, it 
means a lot to me. It means a lot to you. All right. As a mother, I'm hearing so much tennis. And I'm thinking, does he go to school? <laughs> uh, here and there. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, schooling is a challenge. Okay. I mean, you know. Because but he's a smart kid. He's a smart kid. Yeah. He, he was a nice student at school when I took him out of school. Okay. Um, this was when he was, um, I don't know how old were you, 10. Uh, when I saw that he's very serious, but of course, uh, you know, he he was behind comparatively yeah. um, other players, especially in South Africa. I mean, in those days, the so South Africa was the holy grail. Like yeah. you had to, if you were doing well in the South African tournament, you know, that was amazing. Yeah. So the first goal really was to get his South African ranking up and, and to get um, a lot of experience in South Africa. So to do that, yeah. one, he had to train a lot more to catch up. All right. Uh, and two, he had to travel to those tournaments. And so it wasn't really practical for him to go to normal school. Yes. Uh, and the school were very understanding. So we looked for tutors and, you know, and but it, it has been quite challenging to provide consistently mm. good education. What I think has been nice is that he knows the value of education. Yes. That he actually appreciates when he has a chance to study and when he has a good tutor. And uh, that means that, you know, he doesn't waste any time. Also, he's very, he has to be very time conscious yes. because he's got to uh, spend a certain number of hours training. He needs to do stuff off the court. He needs to do mental things. Yeah. as well so all that takes a lot of time all right so then he really needs to plan and think about okay i need can i squeeze in two hours and study uh you know so so i think and you know he gets a lot of you know i guess he learns in a different way yeah. like it's not so structured but it's also very free in a way all right you know that you kind of driven by your interest rather than what you are told yeah. you should know and you don't have that kind of negative attitude that kids sometimes have yes like oh mom is forcing me to go to school she's forcing me to learn because i haven't forced him i mm. can't would you love to go to school would would you like to go to school no <laughs> <laughs> uh, not really yeah i mean because i enjoy playing tennis i enjoy traveling and if i go to school that means less of that. Yeah. Uh, I do wish I could have like more hours in a day to study and all that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I do what I can. All right. I'm not doing badly. Okay. But what would you like to do uh, besides tennis? What would you like to study? Let's say you go to university. Mm -hmm. What would you like to become? You know. Uh, I don't know. Something in medicine. Medicine. Yeah, I like biology. Okay. That's great. That's good to know. But I mean, you said you took them out of a normal school. Yeah. Well, there is a special school. This is the Dow Academy. Maybe, <laughs> you know, there could be some alignment. Maybe, you know, I, I don't think w the Dow Academy would not say no to Africa's number one tennis player or possibly a future, you know, Nadal. I mean, <laughs> I is that your favorite player? Yes. A tennis player? Yes. Nadal? Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it needs a bit of inspired thinking. Yes. Um, okay, my I, I have a European background. Yes. Um, we have specialist schools for sport. Yes. Where, or not even specialist schools, we have some specialist classes. Yeah. Where the kids are doing different sports, but it is understood that for them to to become very very good their schedule and timetable has to be built around their sport. Yes. But they have to be frequently examined and tested. Of course. And to keep providing the same benchmark yeah. of, of even if they take twice as long yeah. to cover the same material, but at, but you they do cover it and you know when. Okay. So I wish that that were possible. Oh, so, um, so in this case, you're saying if there was uh, an institution or a school that will be attached to him where you could come and write exams yes. or tests and stuff like that. 
then you would have some sort of transcript that he can carry on yes, to the next. For, yes, for example. Oh, okay. Uh, and I think it would be good even for the kids attending yeah. the school and, and, you know, kids like that, not just him. Yes. I mean, you know, they could come in once in a while and, and be part of the learning at that school. Ah. And, um, you know, I think it would just open people up a little bit more to to see that there needs to be some flexibility yeah. in in different cases. All right. Um, I hear that somebody is saying, um, do you know um, Murray? Andy? Yeah. 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 Somebody says they remind you, um, <laughs> you know, you remind them of Andy Murray. I don't know. What do you, what do you know of him? Well, I know that he's a great tennis player. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, that he's a great tennis player, did really well. Yes. And suffered an injury and all that, yeah. Okay. But, um, you know, there's one thing that I want you to walk away with, you know, never stop dreaming, mm -hmm. never stop working hard. I, I've, I've been with you for, how many months did I stay with you? Like three, four months? Yeah. Yeah, and I've seen you, how focused you are, even just taking care of your siblings. Like, you know, for how old are you now again? 16. 16. And what standard are you supposed to be in? Form four, imagine that. And you take care of your siblings, you always focus, you got a program, you got a schedule, you guys stick with it. So stick with it till you become world number one, okay? And believe me, you will be world number one. Thank you. Yeah, in ways, one ways, one more than one way or another, I think. You know, are you, are you proud of your son? Yeah, I am. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. All right, okay. So here's one thing I wanna say. Anybody wants to ask a question? Anybody? Anybody come through if you've got a question? We only have six minutes left on this interview. This is TDA Tele Radio, and it is EMP Drive Special Edition. Here we go. Best, me, best, me, best music. Best music. I love the music. Best music. face all over the place we're online 24 7 24 7 you're listening to the hottest internet station the hottest dj mixing the beats beats all right so we got um yes you can put on your headphones on uh we've got tesla he's one of our um Candidates who are auditioning for um, a part of being a part of this whole uh, TDA Tele Radio question that has come through: um, If you were to play anyone now, who would you like to play in the world? Anywhere. Just, just bring yes, just bring your microphone close so I can hear you. Yeah. Like, what do you mean, anyone? Um, anyone who's playing tennis in the world right now, who would you like to play? Let's say Nadal is listening. Let's say whoever is listening. All right, Pete Sampras is listening. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, who would you like to play? Well, Djokovic just won Wimbledon, so you would like to punish like him. To play him. Would yeah. you like to punish him? Not, <laughs> not, not to play. <laughs> I'm not sure about the punishing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. Um, you know how they've got this whole documentary that's possibly like the Netflix thing that's happening, right? Mm -hmm. And they see this, and then one day in the future, you get the opportunity to play these players. Yeah. And then we play this back, and then we say, <laughs> hey, remember this? Yeah. Yes, yeah. so it's possible. You have a question? What would you like to ask, sir? Yeah, um, I was just listening in, and I was looking. I was thinking about his, his schedule, right? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of technical training stuff going on. And with the fact that you're not uh, going into the uh, normal school, the formal school, mm -hmm. Um, part of the former school, what we get as kids is having friends and having a social life yeah. and all of that. So I'm wondering, with your schedule, with what you do, how do you manage uh, your social life? Or maybe even to the mom, like how do you ensure that um, he has some of that as well? Friends, uh, interact with cousins and family and all of that, I guess. Okay, I'll start. I'm more pushy than that. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is something I used to worry about at the beginning. 
right? right? I actually cried when I took him out of school. Oh. Yeah. I, and he was in standard four. Second Wait, which ten. school was this? Standard five. Standard five. Baobab. 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 Baobab, okay. And he was a very popular child by yeah. then, right? right? Yeah. Because of all the sports that he was yeah. good at. And, mm. and I saw that, okay, now I'm taking all this from him. You know, before that, he was, he was a, you know, when children are small, it's not such a big deal. They are always, yeah, like, you know, with you and with the other kids at home. And mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. But then he was already becoming somebody who had a life outside that. Mm -hmm. And I had to cut it. And, uh, and for very uncertain mm. results. I mean, there is probably nobody in Botswana who would tell you that it's a good idea to take your child <laughs> out of school no when they are 10 no with the intention of making them good at tennis you know when yeah. he wasn't even i good mean he, he had never competed outside botswana by then yeah he wasn't even the best in botswana by any stretch of imagination uh -huh. and he went in the morning and he played on the court alone with the coach everybody else was at school then he played again in the afternoon with a few other kids. And then after six months of doing that, he went to South Africa in a, to a tournament. Oh. And he lost in the second round. And, and it showed him, <laughs> yeah, and it showed him how behind he is. Yeah. So he came back and he went back on that tennis court for another six months. Mm -hmm. And then after, and that he was really isolated and there was a lot of doubt, yeah. I think, yeah, in yeah, him. Yeah. Literally. And in me, but I had to keep quiet. I mean, you know, I can't, you know, show my doubt. Mm -hmm. I have to be the one saying, no, it's, it's like possible. the rock. It's possible, but you have to train. And he did that. And, and then, you know, uh, then he made it. I mean, he went to South Africa the next time and he got to the finals. Mm -hmm. And nobody could believe it, what this little kid from Botswana, where mm -hmm. is he coming from? He's got no ranking. We didn't want to let him in the tournament. Now he's in the final. Uh, little kids were crying all over, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you brought some alien guy, now this, he does this to us. <laughs> yeah, so I leave it that. <laughs> all right. Uh, you were asking yeah, yeah. a good question. Do you want to go in, sir? Yeah, and for me, I mean, it's not really a big deal now. Mm -hmm. I mean, playing tournaments, lots of other people there. You make friends, people I train with. It's 2021, I have a phone. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. So, yeah, I mean, it's not really a big deal yeah. for me. Yeah. Oh, all right. No, that's amazing. That's amazing. I just wanted to know that, you know. All right. yeah. Because some of us, our best memories of school are not even about school. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. It's just about the people. <laughs> yeah, but so. they have a great time at tournaments. Eh? Yeah, like, I bet, I bet. You know, when, yeah. especially when they're over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially because there's people of the same interest and all yeah. that. I can see, yeah. I can see but, that. And very international. Like, they have a lot, he's got lots of friends from everywhere. All over the world. And, yeah. and he'll yeah. tell me, oh, I'm going on a call at nine. <laughs> And he'll be gone for an hour and you find that they have a group and there were 10 kids that were talking to each other from all over, all tennis players, uh, you know. So when the president met you, what did you say? I said hello. <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't really know it was him. <laughs> he was wearing this huge cap and a mask oh. up to here. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, Yo. hello, sir. Yeah. And then... I just saw lots of people surrounding him. <laughs> then it, and then it was like, Mr. Masisi, this is... And I was like, ah! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of cap are we taking? Like a flat cap or... Yes, like a safari kind of oh, thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, Denzel said, so that's what's happening right here. At TDA Teller Radio, we bring you the best of the best from Machuti to the world. And um, you don't stay too far. You stay in... Um, Rureta, right? So anytime you feel like you can come and beat us at tennis here at the <laughs> Dow Academy, please do. Mm -hmm. uh, you're more than welcome. Uh, and hopefully, um, yes, you will be number one. Thank you. All right. Any parting words? Where can people find you, Martina? Uh, they can find me next to the tennis courts on a good day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and in secret locations uh, on oh, the yeah. bad days. Okay. And... Um, then as far as the beating of the Mochuti students, 
I think we will bring the third born Martin. I think he Ooh. would also never forgive me oh. if, I, if I never talked about, about it. it. <laughs> Not the best. Uh, well, oh, I mean, I God. think then if if they beat Martin, we then will we, we will bring again. out. Okay. The, All right, the cool. cool. And there's Botswana <laughs> Open happening. Is it this week? Yeah. When when does it start? Uh, Friday. Friday. Yeah. Okay, and you playing? Mm-hmm. This is Botswana Open seniors, right? Yeah. Okay, so I hope you make it to the finals and you beat everybody. Okay. Thank you. All right, this is TDA Tele Radio. Time is exactly 10. Do we have news at 10? Or is 10.30 news headlines with a month later? This is it right here on TDA Tele Radio.